And let's open with number 132, O Come All Ye Faithful. There's nobody more faithful than our Heavenly Father because he loves us unconditionally. Number 132, O Come All Ye Faithful. So we open with prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your beauty of nature and thank you so much for this season where we can remember that what you came here for and the love that you have for us um, in, in our um, not so great place that you came to lift up, lift up us, us up to a higher place. I pray that you'll be with um, Joe as he is presenting the night, that you will bless him and help us to um, be blessed by the beauties of nature. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I took a few days off in October, and um, I was able to visit the country of Costa Rica and um, do some tours in the rainforest in a few different locations. I was there with my uh, sister's family, and uh, I was able to borrow a camera and take some pictures of the birds and of the beauty there. Our world is uh, surrounded and immersed in beauty in all kinds of different climates and uh, different places. And um, we saw 274 species of birds while we were there. I was there for 10 days and uh, I did a circuit there with a tour guide and ornithologist and saw 274 species of birds. Um, but before you think that that's too amazing, um, one of my friends right here in Berrien County, Tanner Martin, he's, he has seen 203 species of birds just right here in Berrien County. And um, so God has uh, put birds um, in different species to desire to live and is designed to live in all kinds of different climates. And um, we probably would have frustrated um, hardcore 
bird watchers because we were taking lots of pictures. There was a group that he had sh um, taken this fall where they saw 425 species in 10 days. So uh, Costa Rica is known for its birds and um, its political safety, although there was a bad story in the news this last week, something that happened in Costa Rica. But um, relative to other countries around, it's been a peaceful place and uh, a place with uh, lots of tourism. This picture here, though, is not from Costa Rica. Uh, this picture is from Afghanistan. One of my friends did a lot of work in Afghanistan. And um, this picture, as many pictures, has a foreground and a background. And um, what's in the background of this picture? OK, there's a building. All right. And uh, the foreground, I mean, the background of this picture, um, there's some beauty in this picture. Now, do you think that the background in this picture um, just happened to be there by accident, or do you think that, that was, there was somebody that designed it and built it? All right, so when there's windows and window frames and straight walls and things that carry evidence of a designer, we know that there was somebody there that designed it and there was intelligence behind it. Now, in this picture, what do you think is more beautiful, the background or the foreground? Well, there's the beautiful flowers in the foreground. And um, when we look at the beauty that's in our world, there are many things uh, in our world that do not give the species, the animals, or the plants any technical advantage, except that God put it there for our beauty, for the rest of nature. He didn't have to make, um, he could have made all the birds brown. Uh, he didn't have to make the birds to sing. But the marks of beauty in our world are an evidence of a designer and an artist. So this is uh, day five of Nathan Green's series that was here at Village a few weeks ago, and I took this uh, picture. And um, Nathan Green loves birds as well. He's got about 15 or 20 species of birds in this uh, picture here. And I think all of them are from North America. He has several of birds, species of birds on this painting um, from from Michigan, he has bobwinks on there. He even has a snowy owl on there, trumpeter swan, Canadian geese, otherwise. But if I were to say that this, uh, this uh, masterpiece here, and I were to look at it and say, well, this looks like um, a wonderful, wonderfully fortunate accident that happened here, and that um, this just happened to work out. There must have been some great weather patterns that um, happened to put the paint on this canvas in this way. I think I might know somebody in this community who might be a little bit offended if I uh, talked that way. Um, <clears throat> so we know, uh, not only on the scientific level, um, seeing an evidence of our creator, but on the artistic level. And uh, Nathan Green has his second open house this season tomorrow. If you want to see some more of his uh, paintings and his series he's done on uh, creation. So I, uh, down, down there, I was in the rainforest most of the time. Um, there was some dry lands, and we were at the ocean a little bit. And so we were in a few different uh, habitats. And um, <clears throat> this pink thing here, I took this picture from the table where we were eating the first day, and most of our meals were under a roof, um, but they had open walls, so you could just, you felt like you were in nature. Does anybody know what that is? Those are bananas. So um, apparently this variety is very pink before it gets uh, ripe. Um, this here is a barbette. And uh, they have two species of barbettes there. And uh, before I go farther, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a verse that Jesus shared in uh, Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus talked about the birds. And uh, there's a lot of colorful birds, and there's uh, brown birds, and there's different kinds of birds. And um, 
Jesus said in, in Matthew 10, when he was talking to his disciples, he says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are still numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So when you look at the pictures of nature uh, that I've taken here tonight, um, every single one of the birds, Jesus says, falls within and inside the Father's will. And if God, who takes care of the birds and what they have to eat and the other threats that come against them, Jesus says, you're of much more value than they. And he wants to take care of us as well. <clears throat> These are some jays. Um, they have a few different kinds down there. All right, we did see uh, howler monkeys while we were there. You can hear the howler monkeys all through uh, the rainforest. The Adam's apple on this creature is about 20 times bigger than your Adam's apple. And uh, you can hear these for about a half a mile echoing through the, the rainforest. And uh, in this tree, there was, there was maybe about 20 of them. And I think they had been there for a few days. And they were eating the, the fresh leaves um, that were in this tree. And uh, there's the baby monkey. And uh, they were very active. Uh, that's a snake down there, uh, a pit viper, a yellow pit viper. That was right by one of the outhouses that I used, and I did see him first. <laughs> uh, our tour guide would get rather um, nervous when we would go off the trail to get a better shot of a bird. And taking pictures of birds is very difficult. There's always leaves in the way. And, um, but there are some very dangerous snakes down there. This is a very colorful tree. Uh, this is not native to Central America, to Costa Rica. This comes from Australia. <clears throat> but this is a eucalyptus tree, and I love seeing uh, the bark, this bright red and yellow and green uh, every time. So I took a couple pictures of the, the eucalyptus. Um, this is my family that we were bird watching with. Wherever there was flowers, there was lots of hummingbirds. My nephew said uh, on the first day, he says, I predict that it's going to rain every day of this trip. And his prophecy came true. But some days it was just 30 minutes. We had, we had good weather every day too. This is a carousel, uh, kind of like their turkey down there. There was a number of these in uh, certain places. <clears throat> um, this is kind of their version of the a raccoon. And he was not very afraid of us. Uh, came right up to us. <clears throat> All right, this lizard. This lizard's called a Jesus Christ lizard. And uh, I did not get to see this lizard do what they're notorious for, though my nephew did. Unfortunately, he didn't get a picture of him running across the water. So we saw him twice, but one morning, my nephew was right by the pond when he saw the lizard run all the way across the pond. And apparently they go fast enough to be able to do that without sinking. <clears throat> uh, we saw lots of uh, species of parrots there. Um, it's hard to see them. They, you usually see them flying. Um, but once in a while you uh, will get them. We were in an orchard one of the last days and there was about 40 parrots that flew right into an apple tree close to where I was. And so that was fun to see that. This is a, a green honey creeper. There's three species of honey creepers there. And um, none of these pictures do justice to how bright these birds actually are. Uh, just, just beautiful. And um, this is a euphonia. All the euphonias there are a similar color of yellow and blue. We saw a couple different species uh, of euphonias. <clears throat> I took this with my iPhone. This was a six-foot boa constrictor. This is why we were supposed to not go very far off the trails. I didn't get very close. Um, this was one of the most special birds we saw down there. This is a green macaw. 
There are not a lot of them. There's about 200 in Costa Rica. Um, we saw them flying over, and we saw them fly into this tree, and our tour guide went and asked the people if we could come inside their property to take pictures. And not only did they invite us in, but the lady invited us into her house and up onto the porch so that this, I got this picture from the porch. And uh, they had lived there for 13 years, and this was the first time they had ever seen green macaws in that tree. So it was a special day for them as well. And uh, we got to know that family a little bit. And uh, I just happened to get one shot with him in flight and the camera in focus, which was very, very fortunate. When I first saw them, uh, they're so bright, I thought surely this was one of the birds that was in the Garden of Eden. But I didn't think that very long because of the sound that they make is about 10 times worse than the American crow. And they're making noise constantly. So... <laughs> Well, it was kind of interesting. <clears throat> uh, these are blue-gray tanagers. They ha we have three um, tanagers in North America, the Western uh, Scarlet Summer. Um, they have about 20 down there. I think we saw these ones every day except one. These ones are very common, but I never got tired of, of seeing the blue-gray tanager. That's a barred um, ant shrike. Saw those a couple times, twice we saw those. <clears throat> That's a red-legged honey creeper. And um, beautiful, beautiful bird. Um, this one has a little bit of an attitude. And uh, that's because of a bigger bird in front of him. And uh, this is the clay-colored thrush. I should have put up a, a picture of the whole bird. It's the national bird of Costa Rica, and it's just straight brown. They have so many colorful birds down there, I guess that they just really treasure their brown bird that they have. <laughs> so, um, but that is their national bird. That's a wild pig we saw, a strawberry frog. We did see red-eyed tree frogs once. I did not get a good picture of them, unfortunately. But we saw frogs a few times. This was a jacamar, pretty good sized bird. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Um, we saw those twice. Now, this is a massive iguana. Saw lots of iguanas, but only saw one close to this size and uh, very colorful as well. <clears throat> You know what that is? It's a turkey vulture, we have those here. Lots and lots of hummingbirds down there. This is a wood nymph. And when hum every time the hummingbird just changes angle slightly, the color changes. And it's uh, very challenging to take pictures of because it's constantly changing. If he just changes a little bit, his whole front could look black. But it looks that colorful to the naked eye when the light's on him and when he's facing you. And lots of very beautiful uh, hummingbirds. This is a saber wing. <clears throat> Spectacled owl. Saw those twice in the rainforest. <clears throat> you know what that is? Sloth. If you look real closely, he's got a baby sloth on there too. <clears throat> All right, uh, the one on the left is a jacopin, beautiful, beautiful blue, and a um, long-billed hermit on the right, the strong, curved bill. There's another picture of the jacopin. Very, very beautiful hummingbird. <clears throat> another parrot. One of the frogs, a very, very small frog that I got a picture of. All right, that's in the rainforest underneath a big leaf. Does anybody know what those are? <laughs> those are bats. So they sleep under there. And um, I got underneath the leaf with my iPhone and got that picture. <clears throat> this is a snow cap. We only saw once. That was a... I was very, very happy to see that hummingbird. You have to find those at the right place. 
Uh, there will be no picture that does justice. I have two or three pictures of the fiery-throated hummingbird, one of my favorite birds down there. Every time he moves, his throat changes color. Just an unbelievable <laughs> hummingbird that's uh, about the mid-range of elevation in the mountains. These are higher up in the mountains. Um, that, I just happened to have the settings right. I didn't do any, any adjustments on that photo. That's just the way they look. Um, unbelievable uh, bird. <clears throat> That's a violet ear hummingbird. And uh, they do have blackbirds down there too. But even blackbirds have uh, color. Do you see any color on this bird? Yeah, he's got yellow pants on. <clears throat> uh, fiery colored, flame colored tanager. <clears throat> uh, this is a mountain gym. Uh, was extremely fortunate to find this bird. Only saw him once. He's high up in the mountains. And... Um, <clears throat> He, we, we did find him. There was one wild peach tree, and there was two or three of them eating peaches in there. And they were moving around really fast. There was lots of leaves, and I could not get any picture. But before I left, he just jumped in that window, and I happened to get that shot. Chlorophonia. Uh, the, back of his, the back of his neck is very bright blue, so he's got bright green, yellow, and blue on him. Beautiful, beautiful bird. <clears throat> All right, this is a capuchin monkey. When I first saw him, he was quite a ways away through the trees there. Um, but he was quite curious. And he started coming closer and started talking to me. And um, then got very close. <laughs> My niece was very bored at this point, but she was bored no longer when this monkey showed up. <clears throat> Uh, there was a couple capuchin monkeys there. This is him standing up. And uh, they were curious at first, then they got mad at me, and this is his goodbye to me. <laughs> uh, this is a white crested coquette. That's the back side of him. And he has... I don't think you can see it very well. I did not get a great picture of him, but he's got black horns coming out the back of his neck. And, uh, but this is the front of him. Same bird. Uh, the green and the white and the red. Just different color each time. All right, we saw uh, two cans down there. This is a, a flame, uh, this is an Arasari. And... I wish you could see it. When the sun's behind these birds, the sunshine shines through their bill. And their bill is like, it's like the sun shining through a stained glass window, except a hundred times better. It's just unbelievable. Really incredible birds. <clears throat> All right, and this is the scarlet macaw. He's a little bit more colorful than the green macaw. A little bit more common, too. And... Uh, we saw them flying a couple times, and um, they landed in the tree by the beach, and we were able to get a few shots of them. Beautiful, beautiful birds. <clears throat> uh, I think this is an ant pita. These guys hop around on the forest floor all the time, and they're very hard to find. And um, when we saw him, he, his belly's going up and down, in and out, in and out, as he makes his little call. It was really funny looking, but cute little bird in the forest. <clears throat> this is a mot mot, and uh, we saw, I can't remember, four or five species of those. I don't have pictures tonight of all of them. This is a trogon. Yellow on the front. Some of them are very iridescent, blue and green on the back but I didn't get good pictures of all of them. <clears throat> a yellow-throated toucan. A 
agouti, I think is what they call these, is their version of the rabbit. <laughs> Lots of warblers. All right, that, this guy was extremely upset that I showed up in his territory. Uh, this is a tiger heron, bare-throated tiger heron. And um, we saw him there for a little while. This is a green heron. We have these in North America as well. This is a uh, yellow-headed caracara. And he was on the beach on the sand screaming his head off and making a lot of noise. <clears throat> yellow-crowned night heron. All right, if you think that picture is about the cattle, you're missing something. <laughs> they have very large crocodiles there, and it's very dangerous to get in the water, at least in this place. <clears throat> Boat-billed heron. Have those in Florida, I think. All right, and... Uh, this is, uh, this is the resplendent Quetzal, and uh, probably my favorite bird, the favorite bird of many bird watchers. They're not, they're not all over the country. They're at a certain elevation <clears throat> in uh, Guatemala and Costa Rica and a couple of the other Central American countries. And um, there's a certain small avocado that they like to eat. And so they, they're only, you only find this bird where these certain trees are. And um, he's got a crown. You saw, you saw his face. It's black on, on the backside and um, a very long tail. And uh, this is the front of him. Very elegant. Part of my favorite part of him. It's not like every bird with those feathers from the wings. That come around, you can see the side just a little bit where they're covering the red. And um, similar to a trogeon, but a much longer tail, a little bit different coloration. And, you know, for this guy, his uh, tail is in the way. So the predators, maybe hawks, maybe uh, snakes, they do nest in hollowed out trees, like where wood woodpeckers would nest. Um, <clears throat> But that, that tail gives him no technical advantage at all. In fact, it's, that tail is a big technical disadvantage. Um, but it is, it is there by design and for beauty like so much of other, God's creation. And uh, everywhere you look, you see uh, God's plan and making the world that we live in beautiful around us. All right, my last two pictures I have here are not from Costa Rica, they're from Michigan, because uh, we have beautiful birds here and I'm not the only photographer, Greg Smith took these. And um, last year, some of you saw over there on Linko Road, the snowy owls that were here. And um, the bird watcher I was talking to down in Costa Rica that was showing me all these, it's his dream to come up here and see a snowy owl. So while you think we're jealous of them, they're actually jealous of us. Um, no, but we had a few of these down here last winter and um, enjoyed seeing these. So that's uh, what I have tonight. I'm going to close out with prayer and um, encourage you to, in our busy lives, in our electronic age, and when we've got pressures all around us, that we take time to notice what's around us Ellen White says that um, John the Baptist in the desert, where there wasn't much beauty, she specifically comments about in his childhood where, how he saw the beauty of the sunsets and, and of the sky where he lived. And uh, whatever it is, the beauty that's around, that it would uh, speak to you of the value that God puts in these birds and taking care of them. And as Jesus said, of us, which he places even more value in, and uh, taking care of us and planning for our future. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beauty and the art and the wonder that you have placed in this sinful world that is degraded by 6,000 years of suffering and death. We look forward to the time when there's a regeneration, when we get to witness the recreation 
And I pray that the beauty of the Garden of Eden and of these uh, fruitful places of the earth, that this will be the beauty that you are able to create in our hearts and that we will be able to reflect it to the world around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.